like uh, I would like to begin with the, the saying that uh, you know, in knowledge economy the world is flat. So when I say that uh, you know the entire world becomes your uh, you know marketplace, and I go by uh, the same statement that uh, if you look at one nation, then you are limiting yourself to that nation itself. But a world at large is a bigger marketplace, and that's where we're talking about seven billion people. And if you want to co-create and sustainable innovations, then you need to create for the world. If you can do that, then it will work in any place that you want. And for that, you're not supposed to do what you're trained to do. That's where I feel that you need to do things that are out of the box. Because you know, it's as simple as uh, a pro product A working in India may not work in Denmark. It may not even work in Italy. So you need to understand that's where it's important to have a cross-culture, cross-disciplinary, and interdisciplinary expertise to come into picture to create sustainable solutions. Till that happens, uh, it's extremely difficult to co-create. So the, uh, the whole idea of uh, sustainability and co-creation comes when uh, two mindsets, you know, there's a meeting of the minds. And that meeting of the mind is not easy unless you're open. And for me, you know, you can have this debate for years together, but the solution is in actually doing it. If we don't do it, then we'll still keep talking about changes and exchanges. That will, that will happen. And I'm also a big believer that you have to learn about each other, whether it is communities or culture, but you have to learn as you deliver, because the world is not waiting for us. Flashback India in 1940s, as I was saying, that you know, the population was close to about 250-300 million, uh, million people. But today in 2012, it's about 1.2 billion. So this is a rampant growth. Now, why this has happened? Do we have any idea about the precedence behind it? Do we have any knowledge behind it? The answer is no. So with this background, if you want to create sustainable solution for India itself, how do you do it? The answer is, go ahead and do it. You have to be there. It's so simple that in Japanese you know, management, there's something called as Gemba. Right? Gemba is real place. Gem is real, Ba is place. So you have to be at the real place with real people in real time to make sure that you come up with solution. And that's what India needs today. And Denmark, I think, is strategically placed to do that because they've seen it's a developed nation. They've, they've had their share of problems. They've overcome with uh, a lot of innovation and technological advancements. If they keep that to themselves, they will not figure out in the world map in the next 10, 20 years. But they can actually re-identify themselves with a country like India, because India has a lot of scope and opportunities. So tomorrow, Indo-Danish establishments can become an example and benchmark for Indo-American establishments, Indo-Italian establishments. Because even, you know, for example, LNT, when it formed, it took only two engineers to come and conquer 250 million people. And today, LNT is a household name. Again, my question is, how do you recreate that magic? Do you need two Danish to come again to India to recreate it? Or you know, what is, what is that? The answer is yes, you need to co-create. So you have to ex welcome people with both hands. There has to be a meeting of the minds. We have to innovate the innovation and not take the old knowledge because it may not work in the new economy. Because things are changing drastically. If you see in India, I can give an example that um, you, you walk down the street, there are two girls, you know, one with a Louis Vuitton bag and a, and a high profile designer dress and the other is from a ghetto or a slum. But both of them have cell phones in their hands. Now that is what is a sustainable, affordable solution. And that happens only when technology and culture meet.